and welcome to Doc Review with me, Camelia Shambayati. In this episode, we'll be reviewing the Oscar-nominated Italian documentary, Fire at Sea, directed by Gianfranco Rossi. And joining me in the studio today, we have Rich Klein, who is the Vice Chair of the London Film Critics Circle and Chair of the Critics Circle Film Awards. And beside him, we have Chris Minan, who is a founder member of Stop the War and Counterfire, and who speaks regularly around the country and on the media on behalf of both. And he is also the author of The People vs. Tony Blair and Capitalism and Class Consciousness, The Ideas of George Lucas. Now, in this deeply moving documentary, Rossi looks at the European refugee crisis through a unique lens by contrasting the lives of the desperate thousands landing on the shores of the remote Italian islands of Lampedusa with the everyday existence of the locals. Let's have a look at our first clip. ed eccoci anche oggi ritrovati al quotidiano spazio dedicato all'informazione Scassaio! Your position please, your position Okay, how many people? Cosa ti senti? Non, po non riesco a far entrare l'aria un po' capito? È un problema solamente che sia un po' ansioso, che sia un po' in tensione. Tutto questo ti passa tanta rabbia, ti passa un, un vuoto nello stomaco, un buco. Your position. My friend. Hello. Hello. Well, don't welcome both of you to the show. Thanks for coming on. Now, I thought this film managed to beautifully address a, a truly heartbreaking humanitarian issue. Rich, what was your first impressions of the film? Well, it, I mean, it's a documentary, so um, it's it's all footage that's shot journalistically. It's um, it's just slice of life material. And what I liked about the film, what I think Gianfranco Rossi does so well, is he just captures the real issue of life. So he's not making a film about the immigration crisis. He's making a film about life on Lampedusa, on this tiny island that's actually closer to Africa than it is to Italy. And it's the front line of the whole immigration issue. So it is where they all land. So that can't help but impact life on this island. So you get slices of life of people living on the island, but you also get the rescue efforts and the, and the people arriving and dead and alive arriving onto the island. Mm -hmm. So it, I love the way that it's put together. It's absolutely beautifully shot and edited. It's very fluid and it just pulls you into these lives and you, you feel like you're living these lives, these various lives and kind of interconnecting all of these what feel like very different issues. That, yeah, uh, yeah, I agree. This film won many awards. And yeah. uh, Chris, do you agree with Rich, with Rich, uh, with what Rich said? Yeah, I do. I do. I think it's a it's a very humane, beautiful, and actually a very thought provoking film um, about what is obviously, or at least partially about what is obviously a very desperate situation. And I, I think one of the interesting things about it is that it manages to kind of hold two different realities in parallel, which both exist on this island. The reality of the uh, of the migrants who've landed 
um, and also the reality of the kind of communities that have been there for generations. Um, and it kind of, they are in a way separate and their lives are very, very separate and there's very, except for a few of them, there appears to be not that much interconnection, certainly with the main family in the film. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, um, Rossi kind of very subtly suggests that there are actually lots of cum communalities about these two um, communities, but also that there's kind of other s relationships. Um, I mean, they both exist in the sea, and there's the the, the whole f the, the fishing community. There's the the young kid who he gets seasick, so he can't go out on the fishing boats, mm. and there's that parallel. Um, but there's also suggestions about previous parallels and histories, and about how. Mm. In the Second World War. That is really interesting, and I want to touch on the juxtaposition and parallels a bit later on. But what I also found unique about this documentary um, was the fact that it didn't have a political agenda. Um, the, it, it was a sort of no commentary either. Um, what did you make of this? Was this symbolic in any way? Well, it's very rare to see a documentary that, uh, that attacks a big issue like this that doesn't have any voiceover, no caption. I mean, there's one caption, I think, at the very beginning of the film that kind of explains what we're going to see. And then there's no, nobody's talking to the camera during the, during the film. So you are just watching this unfold in front of you. And that's very unusual to tell a story without kind of telling you what you're, what you're learning. So the whole thing feels kind of... Like it's just part of everyday life, and you, 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 you're learning things, and you're humanizing a very, very big issue without ever being told what to do about it, or what the next step is going to be, or what you know. You, you know, most documentaries mm. end with no, I an yeah. action Indeed. point that you could take action, and you yeah, know. no, the film truly speaks for itself. And this one doesn't yeah, do that. It, it, it just yeah. it just lets you watch and and work and out how you. How you identify with these people yourself. Indeed. So um, we'll just take a pause there for now and take a look at another clip from the documentary Fire at Sea, which gives us a unique insight into a refugee rescue operation. Please, fast. Your position, please. Your position. 53, yes. I want. And then under, under. Okay, AC 52. We have a small children. Please can have how, a break. Okay, how many, how many people on board? I think it's about uh, 150 people. 100. <laughs> what kind of boat? What? It's between 130 to 160. Okay. And we have more, more, most of them is the women and kids. Please, can you help us okay. very quickly? Yeah, we are thinking. We are staying here in, in the same coordination. We will not move. Madam, please, calm down, because we will send rescue. But you need to calm down. Okay, so save your battery. I will call you back, okay? quite a harrowing clip and um, in the documentary it mentions a startling statistic about the number of refugees that have died trying to cross the Mediterranean Sea and I think a year before it was made it says something like over 3,000 
uh, 700 refugees have died. Now, according to latest statistics uh, from the International Organization for Migration, um, since the beginning of this year until the end of March, there were um, over 23,000 refugees arriving in Italy alone and with nearly 600 deaths. Now, Rich, um, what do you make of the sacrifices that the, the refugees are willing to make, knowing that the stakes are high, they leave their families, and there's a high chance of them dying? to cross the Mediterranean Sea and live in Europe. Yeah, I mean, the film touches on that. You get to hear some of them talking amongst themselves and sharing their stories about kind of escaping really brutal experiences at home and fleeing across. I mean, it's unimaginable to, to think of taking your children and running across North Africa to get to the sea and try to get to Europe. That is just, it's so hard to imagine doing that, the desperation that these people, people feel. Then they get to North Africa and they get, robbed by these transport people who get them spaces in the boats, who charge them a fortune, and then they wind up on these tiny little boats, over, you know, overpacked with people. There's you know, petrol that's soaking into their clothing and making them ill. Yeah, and they're suffering from burns, I'm, chemical yeah, burns. Yeah, it's just and it's really... unbelievably horrifying. And you know, nobody's going to do this just to have a better life. They're yeah. doing this because they're running for their lives. Mm -hmm. they're, they're desperate. And um, you know, I think I, I, you know, you, you watch the people living, living on this island with this enormous number of people coming on, on the shore, mm -hmm. and they just, they can't not help them. The, you know, the, their compassion can't let them reject these people. So the doctor treats them, the, you know, the workers all kind of try to get them warm and dry, and, and it's, right. it's, it's nice to see that there is some compassion, because yeah. if you just because would you the agree with that? Do you think that there's, this <laughs> film gives an accurate depiction of the struggles and the life of a refugee? Well, I mean, you know, I, it's very hard to tell that having had that experience. But I, I, I broadly agree. I mean, I think, you know, the, the, the absolute desperation of the situation that they're in clearly comes across. And, and, and uh, context does come through their experiences because there's one fantastic scene where um, a guy from Nigeria is, is like, he's half singing and half recounting his experience and the experience of his, his friends and how desperate it's been crossing half of Africa and being imprisoned in Libya, nearly dying in the Sahara. You know, the, the, the sort of, the, the, the desperate push factors are there coming out of the film. I also think, interestingly, the film kind of suggests certain other aspects of the situation which aren't drawn out. I think the, the, the predicament is fantastically well well sort of imagined or expressed in the film and no one could come away from this film without thinking yeah. very very hard about why this terrible tragedy so is do happened. you think this film does a service then this documentary to refugees and humanizing them and sympathizing with them i think it does i think it does definitely i'd recommend everyone and anyone to see it and um, it kind of, it's kind of a um an antidote to the cruel rhetoric of politicians absolutely. who just say oh we don't want these refugees here it's yeah. like this is who they are. I mean, yeah. look at look yeah. at them, and yeah. then say that. Yeah, and it, and it portrays the, the the agony that they're in, both physical and psychological, yeah. incredibly mm. well, and and also just humanises them. I mean, yeah. there's one fantastic scene where they're coming towards the port from the point of view of the of the of the migrants, and you can just sort of feel viscerally what they must be going through in terms of thinking, oh, you know, the the, the anticipation, the fear about how they're going to be welcomed or not, yeah. what the police, you know, how they're going to be treated. I mean, you know, you are talking about just risking your whole life, your whole life, everything. Yeah, it's truly devastating. It is. Um, but for now, we're going to take a look at our next clip from Fire at Sea, where we see one of the film's main protagonists, 12-year-old Samuel playing with his friend by the sea. Boom, 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 boom,
That was Samuel, 12-year-old Samuel. He's quite adorable and endearing yeah. to watch in this documentary. Yeah, he's got um, a huge personality. Yeah. <laughs> what did you make of this scene of him sort of firing well, by the sea? Do you think it's just innocent child's play or there's more to it? Well, yeah, they leave you to, they leave you to make up your mind. I mean, a lot of it isn't just innocent child play, but how much of it is related to what he's seen in his life and what the situation is that goes around. I mean, the title of the film refers to this song from 40 years ago, or from the 1940s, about a ship being blown to bits in the harbor during the war and um, so there is a history of conflict on this island so you wonder how much of that is fed down through the generations to this little boy mm. but um, but he certainly provides a lot of energy to the film the clips kind of make it look very quiet the movie very yes. quiet and I want to talk about but, this the, the he, fact he, that he their lives a lot are of so he's running around completely right. hilarious and he's got all of this anxiety and all of these things going on with him but that's the thing about this film that you see the lives of the locals living ordinary lives yeah. and are exposed to this um, and yet, at their doorstep, there's this massive refugee crisis, they're on the front lines of it, but it's as if it doesn't exist in the locals' lives, you hardly see any um, interaction between them. Um, Chris, do you think this is symbolic in any way of how society in general is ignorant of the refugee crisis? Well, I'm not sure that people are necessarily ignorant about it, but, but clearly it's taking place and it's, it's, it's kind of fenced off, you know, I mean, these people are held in camps, um, they're not allowed out by and large um, and uh, you know they, they live in uh, a very kind of brutalized environment on the kind of margins of Europe and I think that that is a reality and I think that clip also to me I mean partly it just happened and it was filmed but also I do think it sort of suggests a certain militarization of society that's going on, unfortunately, uh, and 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 I think it, it it kind of reflects. What do you mean by the militarization of society? Well, I mean, you know, we live in a world more and more dominated by war, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, something that's happened, you know, in the last well, something that's accelerated, shall we say, over the last sixteen or seventeen. And also, years. cinematically, obviously, in the movies and television programs, that this kid will be watching. Absolutely. He's I learned. He knows how to shoot a gun. He's probably never held one, but he knows but exactly. But on a subconscious level, he knows he's the noise. He knows the action. Yeah. And okay. also, it was kind of into into. Twined with the pictures of the of the boats, of the ships in the Mediterranean. Now, one of the things that it made me think about was it is interesting that they are naval, they're military ships that go and pick up these mm -hmm. um, these poor migrants. You know, and uh, and I think a, a background to it, which isn't referenced in the film but is important, is that one of the things that's happened even since the film was made has been the more and more the militarization of the response to the migrant crisis and the extent to which Europe is now mm -hmm. sending ships to to turn the ships back to Libya, yeah. to turn the ships back to Tunisia, mm. um, you know, under threat of actually uh, blowing them up or, or attacking them. And that's a level of barbarity that I think has actually gone up since this film was made. Right, that's a powerful note. Um, but we're just going to take a look at our final clip from the documentary now, which shows director Gianfranco Rossi giving a press conference during last year's Berlin Film Festival. I think that the film can indeed be read politically. My films never have a direct political twist as such, but I think that this film can be said to be political. What it really is, is that it bears witness to a tragedy that's happening right in front of our eyes. I think that we all are responsible for that tragedy. And perhaps after the Holocaust, it's one of the greatest tragedies the world has ever seen. Quite powerful words there. Chris, would you agree with what Rossi said just there? Are we all somehow responsible for this refugee crisis? Well, I mean, I, I, I definitely agree with the point he made, which is that though it's not actually a kind of explicitly political film, the, the politics of the situation does find its way into the, um, into the story in ways which I think are quite enlightening and, and, and very, very useful. I mean, I wouldn't say that um, we're all complicit uh, because it's the politicians 
uh, that make the make the decisions, and you know many of us didn't vote for them. Um, what I do think is that we're all uh, responsible to try and to try and alleviate the situation in any way we can, and I think this film in general will help. Um, and I, but I also think that um, one of the reasons it will help is because it does suggest some of the causal factors here. I mean, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't bang the drum, but it does actually just give you a little Very bit of Very subtly, it does, yeah. You Rich, know. do you think this film's making a political statement? Um, I, I think it's inadvertently making one. I don't think the filmmaker is deliberately making a statement because it's not structured that way. It's not structured in a way where you get the kind of rise and fall of the issue. You get the rise and fall of the drama and the personal, you know, experience. So he's 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 documenting personal experience. He's documenting a situation, a community basically, and how this community is made up of these disparate pieces that somehow weirdly fit together when you're watching the film, but you can't really imagine how they all live together. And I think that's what he's saying. But in a, in another way, then that's a much bigger picture of Europe, isn't it? That's a picture of of these immigrants arriving on the edge of Europe and how do they fit into the, into the entire continent. And I, I think there is a lot that you can draw out of it. I'm not sure if he was trying to do that, mm. but, um, but that's a consequential good, I think that's of a the great film. filmmaker. Yeah. You know, he, and it's thought provoking. He tells a story in a way right. that, that lets you read, read these things into it mm. and, and also lets you feel it as if you're experiencing it, which, mm. is, which is something that's very unusual to, when you're watching, especially a documentary, to have it be so personal. And Chris, so who is to blame for all of this? I mean, the, the film doesn't answer this as it's just laid bare for you to watch it unfolding. Who do you think it is? In well, I mean, that's a, that's a huge question. But I mean, uh, I, as I say, I think there are suggestions in the film. And I, I would say two things are important uh, broadly. One is the kind of economic catastrophe that has befallen large numbers of people in the African continent over the last 30 or 40 years. Uh, where, you know, for most people the situation has got massively worse under the sort of globalisation regime. And secondly, uh, and obviously, the, the wars that the West has been conducting in, in the Middle East, in, uh, in, in Libya, in participating in wars in Central Africa and so forth. And these wars have led to life becoming insupportable for millions and millions of people. And so, you know, we're bombing them and then... They, they, and then they're reluctant to receive yeah, them. Yeah, and then, and then yeah. it's like, you know, then we, they get demonised and criminalised. I mean, it's a double or a triple uh, set of oppressions. I mean, it's absolutely catastrophic. One thing I do think about the film, though, just, which, which is that it manages amazingly to both point out the differences between the two experiences, mm -hmm. but also to point out some similarities. And in a way, you get this sense of there could be, and there actually is solidarity. The doctor mm -hmm. shows solidarity. Yeah. But even with the family, you know, you think, actually... You know, are they that different? You know, <laughs> there's so much in common that the, the migrants have with the people living there. Partly, you know, no doubt, lots of people from Africa came over and occupied the island or, right. or inhabited yeah. the island centuries ago. There's, a, there's so much that we have in common. I think the film, I read the film as a plea for us to, to, to express that commonality yeah. and that solidarity. And Rich, final say to you on this film, should people go and see it and was it effective in delivering its message? I think it's, it's an essential film. I really think it's one of those... It's one of those rare documentaries that really everyone should see it because it, it, it's unforgettable. And it's, it, it deals with, the, well, as we've been saying, it deals with a very big issue without telling you what to think. Mm -hmm. So it lets you experience it and kind of internalize it in a way that I, very few films do that. I'm afraid that's all the time we have for this show. Uh, thank you to both of you. And that's it for this episode of Doc Review. Thank you to both my guests and to you for watching. Make sure you follow us on Twitter and Facebook, where you can find us on at Doc Review Show. That's at Doc Review Show. Do let us know your views on today's film, and you can even suggest a documentary that you would like us to review. I've been Camilia Shambiati, and see you on the next episode of Doc Review.